Hello, everyone. On our podcast show this week, uh, we are talking about the nightmare of EV charging in the USA for Canadians. Uh, hopefully, this episode does not dissuade you from the movement of getting an EV uh, in your garage, in your life, because this has some solutions uh, that hopefully will help someone out there that is struggling with the exact experience that I have as a Canadian traveling into the United States for a vacation. Uh, joining me this week and every week, and hopefully I do not dissuade him from buying an EV, is Winston Chim <laughs> right over here. Sweet. And this is probably our second time being in the same room together. And uh, mm -hmm. hopefully you guys feel the energy. And if you do, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can watch more episodes from us. Uh, because this is also a YouTube exclusive. So you won't hear it on Spotify. You won't see it on any other channel. You won't get it on the Tim Cook network of Apple podcasts. This is <laughs> YouTube exclusive. All right. So I'm going to move along here and I'm going to explain what kind of happened. So basically I was uh, heading down to the United States mm -hmm. via Washington state. And uh, I was heading down to Oregon. One of our first stops was mm -hmm. a EV charging station. Uh, Electrify America. Um, now, I've had really great luck with Electrify Canada, which is the Canadian arm of Electrify mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. Electrify America and Electrify Canada, uh, for those that do not know, they came about because uh, <laughs> Volkswagen was actually fined a significant amount oh, of money okay. for faking the um, the mileage figures of their diesel vehicles, oh, diesel yeah. gates, yeah, right? That's right. Uh, and because there was an opportunity for them to get into the electric vehicle space, mm -hmm. uh, they decided that, hey, you know what? Why don't we make a deal? Why don't we build EV chargers instead? Right. And they did. Um, in Canada, Electrify Canada is actually a really decent network. Uh, mm -hmm. They have stations all the way through British Columbia to Alberta. Uh, they kind of fall off on the prairies and then they pick back up in Eastern Canada, starting in Ontario. Right. Um, so Manitoba and Saskatchewan, it's kind of barren, uh, but that's not uh, unlike all the other networks. Mm -hmm. The only network that is there is basically Petro-Canada and the co-ops. Uh, there's Flow and a couple other networks out there, plus some third parties. Uh, so it it's still a problem, but overall, if you're traveling between BC and Alberta, uh, Electrify Canada does a great job. I, I have a question. Though. Yeah. Um, do these... Uh, charging networks charge similar pricing or is there one charging more because of certain, you know, different type of things? Tell That's me. a good question, actually. Um, presently in Canada, the only networks that charge completely differently uh, would be uh, the Elon network, oh, Tesla? the Tesla network, okay. because they apply to push uh, the Canadian government to start charging mm. by commodity pricing per kilowatt hour. So they could do now, because of that's been pushed through and uh, it's through certification yep. and everything like that, Tesla could do search charging, search different prices for different oh, times right, of day. Right. Uh, they can charge uh, a huge markup over the commodity price. So let's just say that the, um, the price per kilowatt hour in BC for a kilowatt hour of uh, electricity mm -hmm. was nine cents. All right. Elon could charge 59 cents. Okay, so search <laughs> uh, charging for you guys to know is basically peak hours and yeah. non-peak hours, right? Yeah, so anytime between 10 to 3 or something like that, it would be peak hours. Mm -hmm. Anytime between 5 to 7, off-peak hours. And further on in the, in the day, it would be even less money, theoretically speaking. Right. And uh, in those cases, um, a lot the, the, the issue right now is that a lot of people um, find that because there are some... Uh, and we talked about this. Actually, we have an episode about this. Yeah. So if you want to find out more about the issues with slow charging EVs <laughs> in the at the only EV charger in town, charging at 50 kilowatt hour, what it looks like when you're the fifth car behind, you want to watch that episode. It's uh, back in season four. Yeah, that's right. Season four. Right? Well, season wow. Five. Four seasons. Five seasons, right? <laughs> this is season um, five. <laughs> so you'll understand a little bit more about why... Um, to a certain extent, it's good to charge by commodity, but mm. not right now. Yeah, not right now. Um, so in the U.S., most of the stations are now also charging by uh, either time or by com commodity pricing. In uh, Oregon and Washington, it's kind of a mix of both. 
Right. Uh, EVgo, which is another competitor to Electrify America, uh, does charge by per kilowatt hour or charges by time. Mm-hmm. And in those cases, you can quickly see um, if you have a very fast charging vehicle, you pay a lot more. Oh, really? I would have thought less time means cheaper. Less time means cheaper, but you're paying per kilowatt hour. Co- by commodity, they say. Yeah. Okay. So if you were to get out of there as fast as possible, you pay less mm. than someone that was charging a lot less fast. Yeah. So, you know, like that kind of um, puts a um, puts a damper in a lot of people wanting to buy a faster EV, faster mm-hmm. charging EV, because, well, it doesn't matter now. Uh, I can just sit here at the charger and go have breakfast and come back and it's charged. Yeah. Whereas before- yeah, I think it was one of those points I was making, um, whether it was worth getting a more expensive, faster charging EV versus a standard regular ones that you probably get, you know, out there on the market. Yeah. What's the difference? I mean, does, does because uh, I have faster charging, that means it's cheaper? No, it's like I said, it's yeah. going to be- It's going to save you time. Time. It's going to save you time time no matter what but it, but in the current situation it's going to cost you more money to be faster <laughs> which it's like a penalty right <laughs> it's a penalty for having a more um more modern electric vehicle mm-hmm. i understand that at some point yeah. it's going to level off like it all all ev chargers are going to have this minimum standard mm-hmm. and then after that it's like your premium and your ultra unleaded gas Oh, like so you'll a, have that, but like a every, tiered level. Yeah, right? like a tiered level. Yeah. It's like even gas pumps in Canada, they have a certain flow rate, and it has to meet that flow rate. That's set by the government, right? Set by the government, which okay, uh, yeah. probably weights and measures Canada, yeah. and um, then that way it's measured at a certain rate. Mm-hmm. So weights and measures Canada is the or uh, is the um, governing body that is actually what um, mm-hmm. Tesla lobbied against to get per kilowatt hour charging because they have enough chargers to support. Right. Everyone that wants sure. to come in and charge versus the little town in the middle of nowhere in BC mm. that only has one charger and five travelers wanting to use that same charger and everyone is taking their sweet time <laughs> because, hey, per kilowatt hour, I'm paying the same, I'm, I'm, it's cheaper, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But anyhow, um, moving Tell on. your story. Here. What happened? So the, the, I had a great experience with Electrify Canada. Obviously, mm. I expect yeah. to have the same experience with Electrify by America. Right. They obviously they are the more of the parent company, right? And they have all the bells and whistles. They have the newest chargers, right? In the US. Mm-hmm. And I was really excited to use one of their next right. generation, second right. generation, third generation chargers because they look so cool in the Instagram post, right? So I get to one. I already prepared in advance. At least I thought I did. Yeah. I downloaded the Electrify America yeah. app because the Electrify Canada app does not actually work. Oh, doesn't it? In the US. It's not universal two different apps for two different areas. So remember that. Oh, it's like the McDonald's app. Exactly. I have a McDonald's apps for Canada and that, the, that wouldn't work in the UK or the Hong Kong. So you have to download a separate a country specific app yes. for whatever region you're in. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So I, I already added that app. I put my car in, mm-hmm. I put my credit card in, thought it was ready to go. And then? Get to the charger. Okay. Right? Now, if it wasn't a sunny day, I'd be pissed because I spent 30 <laughs> minutes faffing around with the app, trying to figure out whether or not I put in the wrong credit card. I tried two hmm. different credit cards. Okay. Wouldn't take it. Wouldn't charge the card. Wouldn't pull money off it to allow the charging session. Call customer service. They're like, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm really sorry about the experience that you're having, sir. Um, I'm gonna try a couple things on my end. Yeah, no, 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 sorry. Um, Looks to be a pretty issue with the credit card. Oh, okay. What's the issue at the end? So after I left that charger because I couldn't charge there and I really needed to go to the bathroom. So I had to find the bathroom first. Okay. I drove 20 minutes backwards to, to an EV Go charger, another charger. Okay. Now this okay. is this is the competitor to Electrify Canada. Okay. This is the partnership with General Motors. General EV Go is with General Motors. So big right? company, big company. Reputable. Well, okay. they're on their Instagram. They're they're showing new sites opening all the time. Right. In fact, as I was driving down, mm-hmm. I noticed a bunch of sites that were covered in plastic. Yeah. They were EV Go stations. Okay. They weren't open yet, so they're building them all over the interstate. Right. Mm. So at that time. 
I didn't have access to those. I didn't know they were there. And the planning software that I used chose Electrify America because I told it to, because I thought that would be the best experience. Okay. Clearly it was not. And I couldn't even charge. So I went to an EVgo station, EVgo. which uh, allows Canadian credit cards to charge no problems. So the, so the problem with Electrify America, uh, America now is that it didn't take Canadian credit cards. Will not take American, uh, but, Canadian credit cards. Coincidentally, the Canadian app does take American credit cards. But then also, wouldn't the credit card be uh, internationally acceptable, right? One would think, but unfortunately in this case, um, as I was charging my vehicle at an EVgo station EVgo, okay. at Fred Meyer in uh, near the airport in Seattle, because I had to go backwards, um, okay. I talked to the customer service rep and he said, no, sir, it appears that you are using an international credit card and we do not accept international credit cards on our oh, app. Okay, right. Oh. That explains it, right? I, you mean, I can't even give you my credit card number and you can load my account for me? No, sir, we cannot do that. So basically the shop themselves in the foot only accepting American credit cards for American users. Yep. Yet the Canadian app accepts American users. No problem. Oh God. Weird. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. How can anyone know that until you tr try the charge the first time? Okay. Now, you know, guys. Now, you know. Okay. okay. So I'm going to share with you a workaround in a little bit. Okay. EVgo. But, but I want to talk about EVgo first yeah. because let's just put it this way. A lot of uh, Tesla chargers are great. Mm -hmm. Tesla drivers love coming to their chargers, plugging in, any and having charger. any any Tesla charger right. plugging in, and then having it all work. Okay, it just works. It knows your car, knows your account, starts charging you money. Okay, this is the experience that you get with EVgo after the very first time that you activate a service called Auto Charge Plus. It's a service within EVgo. That's right. Uh, like a level that you buy. Yeah. So okay. what you do is if you have one EV mm -hmm. attached to your name, it's easiest this way. Uh, and what you do is you basically activate uh, that you want to do this. Great. Uh, your car, your VIN number is put in. You go to a EVgo charger in the US. Right. You go to that charger. You start the session with the app. The app will automatically register your vehicle the very first time mm -hmm. that signature is charger it's vehicle identification and it'll start charging great the next time you use the charger all you need to do is plug in and it'll just do Does, it so first time round is like a setup configuration it's a setup all right? of this is a setup the first time and then after that future charging using the same evgo network, network. it will automatically uh, verify or recognize your app slash car and that's then right you just go and charge okay that's right uh credit cards credit card was no problem so it accepts canadian credit cards even an american express which is very hard to use <laughs> you actually very hard to use <laughs> but but okay for users that's fine but for the actual merchant which is evgo yep. they're probably charging like three four percent <laughs> uh, right? yeah and you know like one of the fun things about the EVgo app, once you set it up and everything like that. And now that you have the auto charge mm -hmm. all set up, it's so easy for you to just go plug in. Yeah. It automatically starts the session. You're mm -hmm. good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some quirks with the app, obviously, as with right. any app. Like, for example, when I went back to check the app, it said it stopped charging, but in reality, it was still charging. Okay. So it didn't, didn't refresh at a certain rate okay. um, to, to tell the app that everything was still yep. going on. So what it what happened there was uh, in a couple of times when I came out, I was like, hey, it stopped charging, it's still charging on the thing. And I'm like, oh, huh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we need a few more percent. So okay. we'll just go back in. So so um, let me ask you, uh, the experience that you had with Electric Fire America versus EVgo, EVgo was a better experience, okay? Absolutely. In terms of Electrify Canada, if you were here in Canada yeah. versus uh, EVgo in the United States, the charging experience in terms of um, duration, time, about the same? Uh, what I would say is, okay, well, duration time is, is, is that depends on the charging uh, okay. infrastructure, right? Okay. Uh, the chargers that, that, that were there, uh, with EVgo, they're using slightly older equipment in some sites. They're upgrading rapidly. That's Google for you. What? <laughs> no, I don't want that. <laughs> we're going to leave this in the podcast. But anyhow, <laughs> yes, Google, you're being nosy. Uh, so... Okay, so let's let's look at it in, in two in two um, two ways. Number one, mm -hmm. charging experience compared to Electrify Canada. 
Electric hand chargers do work. They okay. work all the time. Uh, if they don't work for you, mm-hmm. if that's just, if that uh, station is down, I believe this is the same for the U.S. as well too. If you plug in, right. and the, in the station something's wrong with that station, it'll just give you a free charge. It, a free charge? Yeah. Okay. So that's you, interesting. You just plug it. If if it's down, if there's something wrong with the system, if it's oh. their fault, they'll just give you the charge because you're there for a reason, and they and they need to get you going. Right. So that's a good customer service thing. On both sides that's of the border. That's good. That's good. With the electrified imagine, Canada and America. Imagine you're driving there and because the charge is not working or yeah. not able to charge you with your credit card, or whatever, yes. then you'll be able to still charge no matter what, which is good. Which is yeah. Good. I mean, okay. that's, a, that's a good thing. The bad thing was that I was not able to give them my money to charge. <laughs> they wouldn't have even accept it because it was a Canadian credit card. Okay. So, but on in the Canada side, um, there is actually provisions for US and also for Canada. So even in their app, yeah, Canadians are just as uh, important as U.S. Mm, mm. subscribers. Okay, <laughs> which is you know like it's weird, right? Um, the service-wise, all the stations that I've ever been to in Canada for Electrify America, uh, sorry, Electrify Canada, yeah, have been reliable. They are the fastest charging reliable mm-hmm. network on this side of West on, on this side of Canada. Uh, Eastern Canada has their quirks because they started there uh, mm-hmm. first. So they might have some older equipment that just needs some tweaks and upgrades. But in, in Western Canada, my favorite network by far. Okay. 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 Which is why I expected exactly the same experience in the US and I didn't get that. Yeah. So so you had a better experience in the United States using EVgo, right? Absolutely. So do you think EVgo will have similar or branches, subsidiaries, whatever in the Canada? Something? I don't know. Um, okay. They do offer a superior charging experience because of their Auto Charge Plus, because you just plug in and go. They also have multiple um, tiers of membership. So if you know that you're going on a road trip, and I totally forgot to do this because I wasn't planning on using EVgo, okay. they actually have a membership there where you can actually save money if you pay like a initial dollar ninety nine, mm. because you'll save twenty percent on your charging rates. And no. you don't pay the um, the state the the session rate. Okay. So a dollar ninety nine gets erased very quickly, right? This, this is another question I want to ask. So imagine if I'm a Tesla driver, right? Yeah. Can I use EVgo as well as Electrify America? Is that possible? Yes, you can. On um, EVgo, if with an adapter, you should be fine. On Electrify America, if you're using a Canadian credit card, <laughs> yeah, no. unless unless <laughs> unless you have this workaround that I have have uh, figured out, which Again, this is a workaround. It may or may not work. I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Um, During your road trip, yeah. Do you, did you see more EVgoes and Electrify America stations versus Tesla stations? Charging Tesla stations. stations were not always in the same place as Electrify America okay. or EVgoes. Uh, they were always kind of either opposite ends of the same area. Right, right. So unfortunately, the segregation between Tesla drivers and all other EV drivers continues in the US. That's not that's right? bad, right? That is segregation. That is, that is. We want all EVs users to be the same. Yes. What's going yes. on, man? No. Come on. All EVs, all EVs need to be able to get along, right? I mean, in a lot of places, all the all the gas stations are in okay. similar corners, opposite corners. Yeah. Um, when I was going down there, because I was with other people, um, any of your drivers? Uh, the other guy was driving a uh, a Tesla. A Tesla, okay. And uh, he was always not with us because he had to go to the opposite side or to the other side of the block, right? And we were always at the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> where the other chargers were, Electrify America specifically. But, but wait, wait, the Tesla st- uh, charging stations, were they, are they in a nicer area, like with amenities and all that kind of stuff? No, they actually had their own empty parking lots most of the time. Okay, okay. okay. So they had nothing right. or they had something nearby where they could walk to it, uh, like a Staples or or, or a uh, or a <laughs> Target or something like that, uh, near Bell's Fair Mall, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the experience varies. Uh, most of the Electrify America stations that I noticed were actually near the back of the lot or okay. near the dumpsters at the Walmart. Uh, the EV Go stations were at more premium locations okay. where you could actually get food. Wasn't always near a dumpster. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, the, the, the couple that I used were actually near a mall, which okay. is actually okay. was right in the middle of the mall, four yeah. stations set up in the middle, which was great. Um, this was at the Tacoma Mall where they had a older, slower setup. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you're shopping, it doesn't really matter. Right. So you're just going in there and everything. 
Uh, they also had level two charges as well too. If you didn't need a, a quick charge, so you mm. can just, if you're going to be there for four hours. You might as well just use the level two. Yeah. So yeah. they had all that and uh, that was fine and dandy. But you know, like EVgo um, compared to all the other charging stations in Canada, specifically, um, I guess that's your other kind of question. Yeah. Um, if EVgo were to start setting up shop in Canada today, I would change. Okay. I would change because of that auto charge plus feature. It works so well. And another question I would like to ask is uh, Electrify Canada or US and EVgo, is there a, su a subscription charge no, for it? No, you don't have so, to subscribe to anything. You can just be a guest. Okay. You can just charge as, as you need to. You Depending on the, the, um, mm. which network you ha have, you might pay a session fee. Okay. Um, EVgo charges the session fee. Um, Electrify Canada does not, but they charge you a higher rate. Right. So with a subscription, it would be no session fee, whatever. It's basically maybe a little bit benefits. There, you get a lower rate, in, lower rate, and you basically pay for um, you pay for that session fee, or you pay for that subscription fee, probably within your first charge. Mm. And they've okay. set it up that way where you know it, it's fine, right? If you're charging every month, at least two or three times a month, it's worth it to get one of the plans because you'll you'll suck that up. Like it's like four dollars $4 in Canada to subscribe to Electrify Canada. Uh, you pay 20%, 25% less, I believe. I can't remember the exact cost okay. right now. Yeah. But you you've already paid for the session That's fee. That's true. You've so, already paid for that fee. So it would be a good idea to subscribe if you had a chance. If you want to save. Yeah, well. exactly. Right, and right. that's why I forgot to do it on EVgo because I was expecting to be on Electrify <laughs> America. I was expecting to give Electrify America Your my business. money. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? You wouldn't take it. You wouldn't take you it. You wouldn't take it. And it really <laughs> limited the way that I travel because EVgo is rolling out stations like crazy, but they weren't open in time for my visit. Right. Um, and the way that they started to set up the stations, there's a minimum of four of them. In fact, I saw one station, I believe, that had eight across, which is fantastic. This wow. is like a Tesla setup. That's good. I right. think they're, they're maybe taking the idea of, uh, you know, the ch Tesla charging stations where you have like eight eight on the block. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, rather than just have one or two, it just makes sense. Right? Yeah. And uh, like, I, I, hate, I hate to be gushing in the fanboy of EVgo, but once you experience Electrify America and this hassle as a Canadian driver, mm. and then being able to go to an EVgo station, plug right in, right, and then just leave the car alone, and it knows who you are, it charges correctly, and your app just pings you after it's done. I mean, isn't and, that the way it's supposed to be? Right. Another question also. So you're driving in built up urban areas, yeah. city areas. Yep. What about on the road where there's like no like buildings, amenities or anything like that? Imagine if you're on a road trip going to the America now. Well, one of the nice things about the, both the EV goes and Electrify America is that they always seem to be built in a spot where there are amenities. Okay. The exception being uh, in Bakersfield, I think there's an Electrify America flagship station that's in the middle of nowhere, but I think there's corners, uh, a store nearby, oh, Okay. but it's a huge station in the middle of the desert. Oh, okay. On All one right. of the freeways. Um, but either case, you will have the app to tell you where your next one yeah, is. Right? Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Right. And, uh, you know, we were, you, you can set it up where you can, the problem with EVgo and I wanted to use them was that they didn't have stations set far enough, uh, close enough together that I could use them without supplementing on mm -hmm. Electrify America, or mm -hmm. you have to take alternate routes. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to go. Right. Yeah. And I think that, because of the the mess up with that, it really I learned a lot, and I'm hoping that mm. this uh, this podcast will kind of help the people out there that are struggling as well too. Because I'm a pretty technical guy, right? <laughs> but imagine if someone who wasn't technical, they'd be freaking out right now. Like, where do I charge my car? What's going up? Like, oh, how yeah. how do I get to the next charger? Like, imagine the the fear. Of that. not being able to get to the next charger, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, you know, <laughs> stupid memes where people, right? but a tow truck using gas <laughs> was taking a, uh, a a generator, right? A petrol yeah. or gas generator so they can charge the Tesla when it's actually stuck on the road. Yeah, and, you know, like I'm going to have some <laughs> tips on how you can avoid that. But, you know, I want to share with you, first of all, I did eventually figure out how yeah. to figure to how to make 
Electrify America, take my Canadian credit card. How do you it do is that? absolutely the dumbest, dumbest thing ever. Okay, what okay. do you do? So zip codes are numbers. Zip codes, mostly, yeah. Five digits. Yeah, postcode right? in Canada, zip codes in the US, okay. Yeah, but postal codes in Canada are alphanumeric and numerical. Alphanumeric and numerical, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and there's six digits, right? Six, yeah. So how do you get six into five? How did you do that? Well, this was this was the key. So what I did was normally when you go to gas stations in the US, you can just basically put zero, 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 it'll take your money. Okay. Right? Yeah. Or you put one, two, three, four, five or something like that. It'll just some BS postal code, it'll just do it. 90210 is one of my favorites. That's uh, Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, but that didn't work in the Electrify America okay. app. Okay. None okay. of these tricks worked. And that's why it was so frustrating. So eventually, what I did. What do you do? Was I pulled the three numbers out of my postal code. Three numbers, okay. And then I added two zeros at the end. Okay. And for a just, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to try this. Let's see what happens. It took it. What? It took the card. It said valid. What does that mean? Well, I don't believe it because the first time I put my card in, it was also valid because I had not touched my account for so long. Okay. As I set it up, I was like, this got to be a fake. So what I did was because they allow you to pull money and just charge a certain amount onto mm -hmm. your account, mm -hmm. I went ahead and I charged $20. It worked. Oh. But then the postcode is wrong or the zip code is wrong. It's a number that it understands, but it might not be a permanent fix. Right. This is always the danger of these workarounds. And this is likely why customer service did not instruct me to do one of these because it's not, fraudulent things. <laughs> because it's not like an official thing that it's they- It's not official. Yeah. It's something that is a workaround, which yeah. could be looked as a, or classed as a loophole. And yeah. Then they need to fix it. See, the, in, in the US right now, there are literally, in Canada as well too, and mm -hmm. in the rest of the world, there's too many apps. <laughs> there's literally too many apps, <laughs> right? And yeah. you have to be in a place where you can get signal. You True. Have, and you, and of all, oh, man, like, and I hate having to give you a workaround because what if you're stuck out there? I don't. I, and but the it, workaround might work for you. It may not work for someone you, else with someone else. A, another credit card, right? You might not. I, it worked for okay. It worked for the toughest card, which is the American Express, because no one takes it. <laughs> but still, if you didn't have, if you had some weird card that just didn't want to work that way, I would I, still feel bad. I, I wonder if, for example, I'm, I'm British, right? So uh, I've imagine me from UK going into America. Say, I don't know, I'm heading down to Florida. I mean, a friend. That's a good question. I wonder if a UK car would work. I, I went in and rented a Tesla or whatever electric yeah. car, uh, electric vehicle, and then now I'm going to need to charge. But then I got a British credit card. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do, right? <laughs> I'm pretty screwed, right? <laughs> you know, um, it should just take any card or, like, and, and that's the thing, the, the, the card readers were basically broken mm. on all of, like, <laughs> what the guy on the phone also told me was, oh, sir, you can also try tapping your card or swiping it. And I told the guy, Did it's you like, it? I tried. The card reader is broken. The card reader is broken. How can I swipe my card when the card reader is broken? It won't even take the tap, uh, right? Uh. So that was the other issue is that um, payment methods, credit card, international, local. They, they should the start accepting Bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> That's too expensive, too expensive. But you know, you know what I'm saying is that there's not enough yeah. payment methods. The, the reliability of payment methods is also poor. Oh, wait there. Um, what they could do is uh, use the their own app as a form of payment. You could top it up. like. Uh, yeah, but you're still using an app. We want to get uh, away with, we, okay. The average person that rents a car from Hertz rents an EV from Hertz, mm. is going to go from station to station is not going to have an app. They expect that car to work, right? Mm. So they're going to go to a station, Electrify America in this case, and they want to tap either their car or swipe their card. And they want that part to work. Mm. And it doesn't work because it's broken. Oh, God. <laughs> right? So I experienced that at least a couple of times where the guy said, and, and I left this out because it was more about the app, is that they wanted me to swipe the card because they know that if you swipe the card or tap it, it should work with an international credit card. It didn't. It didn't? It didn't. Uh, did you test it with not just, it could be just 
that charger was broken. Could you? It's possible. You, I tested with another one later on, but it was after I discovered that the workaround. Okay. It was immaterial at that point. Oh, uh, right, right. So <clears throat> yeah, apps are an issue. EVgo has the right idea. If you just sign up everything the first time and then you can delete the app after that. Yeah. So basically, super duper. So basically the, the user experience uh, with EVgo was uh, way better. Superior. Yeah. Superior to yeah. everything okay. else after the first charge. Yeah. Electrify America is like Electrify Canada, but only worse if you have a Canadian credit card, unless you know this <laughs> workaround, around. which may or may not work the next time for you. And that's what I fear is that yeah. someone will watch this video, get the, get the fix, then it doesn't work. And mm. then I feel bad. I feel bad. Right. So they gotta, they gotta work on it. They gotta allow natively different country credit cards. Yeah. It's all they need to do. They just need to make it work. Just yeah. like we do in Canada for Electrify, Canada customers for US customers as well, too. So, mm. but True. after all this, everyone at Electrify America was very apologetic. I'm sure that they, their hands were tied. And I'm, I hope that they're working on this because more and more Canadians are coming to the US again because everything is open for business now. Open. Yep. And we want to give you our money, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the EV sense. Not in the EV sense. So again, EVgo, I would love if you came up to Canada yeah, right now and just start setting up stations. I know that would be a lot of money uh, or even partnering with someone to just rebuild their station like yours uh, or even just take that technology that you have, the Auto Charge Plus. It's so good. It is exactly what I thought EV charging would be like. And that would be great. That's it. If once you have that good experience with the uh, EV charging, um, so I'm going EVgo. back. I'm only going to use EVgo chargers from from this point on because when you go to the states, when I go to the states, yeah, right. Yeah. It's it's really easy for me now to say that because I've had uh, several good experiences with mm -hmm. it. Every time it worked, yeah. Uh, and you're setting up new chargers, which I don't even know about yet, and uh, you're announcing them on your on your Instagram, which is fun. That's good. That's good. They're taking social media. They're taking and the social then, media. You know, experiencing for the users. Okay, yeah, that's good. And, but you know. I, I know that uh, Electrified America did do the stunt where their new CEO drove across America and yeah. drove all their stations from, from California to Boston in his Ionic 5, just like your brothers. Yeah, yeah, oh, and uh, five, yeah. he did yeah. it. He also um, said, yeah, there were some problems. <laughs> 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 I hope he takes that to heart because if if he's an EV driver, if, if he means it, mm. He'll make sure that those problems are never a problem again. He'll put those well, on the get fixed. list. Yeah, yeah. And he'll have a auto charge plus feature on his network as well too. Because even I'm sure that he was sick of pulling out the app every single time, and figuring out which station it was, oh, and, and right, like right. and trying to you know activate the charge. I don't yeah. want to do that. No one wants to do that. So so basically, what you're saying is you, you just drive up to an EV Go charger. Uh, you don't even need to pull out the app. No, you just unhook the charging port uh, thing, yeah. plug it into your car and that's it. Yeah. It's like, hello, Steven. Oh, hi. Wow. We're charging your vehicle now. Cool. That's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and it's just a one setup configuration. One time with the one app time. and then you're set. Now, if you want to know what your percent charge is, have the app available on your phone. That's the only thing I used it for after that fact. Oh, that's good. That's that good. That is the way... To, this, as, as the Mandalorian says, this is the way. This is, this the, is way. the way. This is the way. And uh, <laughs> EVgo has set the way. So okay, I want to share just some really quick tips for anyone that's traveling outside of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and this also applies to Canada as well, too, if you're traveling um, to areas where stations are scarce, right? Yeah. So always allow a bigger buffer before charging. Um, I set my vehicle to 19% as where I start looking for as when I need to charge. The reason why is because every EV has a charging curve and from 19% and up to around 70%, it charges the fastest. Is that different for different types of EVs though? Every EV has a different curve. Okay, right? so find out what your best charging percentage is and then go from there. Yeah, so okay. your fastest, your, the fastest part of your curve because it's like a fan curve. Does it tell you though in the, on the car? No. You have to do it yourself. Find you have to out find your, out what it is. Find out yourself, okay. But usually if you start from 19%, you're probably doing pretty good up to about 80% where at 80% and beyond, your car basically takes as much time as it takes to get from 80, from 20% to 80% because, 
for the last 20% because yeah. it's trying to uh, it's trying to cool your battery. It's trying to make sure that your yeah. your fast charge is it's, not um, it's too like, uh, It's like your phone where you can it doesn't oh, go up to 100% charge. It's actually only 80%. 80% it starts to trickle. It yeah. starts to trickle yeah. off. So okay. that's one thing that I would definitely do. Uh, Number two, plan your stops a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's, if you know that every every 200 kilometers or every couple of hours you're going to stop anyway for yep. a break or whatever, just make sure that it's near a restaurant or a restroom mm -hmm. uh, or restaurant, mall or whatever, where yep. there's a charger nearby and just plug in. Go inside, do your business, come back out. You're probably better for it anyway because you're not tired and yep. you know, you're not <clears throat> wanting to need to go to the bathroom. Right. Uh, and you know what, uh, like, like we mentioned here, set up your apps in advance. If you can, yeah. the electrify America app, unfortunately was the exception because I didn't know that it just wouldn't work. But now that you have this tip, if it will take your money, maybe fill it up to uh, like $40, put $40 in as right. soon as it lets you do it. At least that way you're good for at least four, four charges. Yeah. Just right? in case. Just in case, just like right? a top up, right? Top up your, you know, app. So yeah, and mm -hmm. if you're gonna be traveling, you, you know you're vacationing. Um, eat and sleep at places where they have free EV charging. There's a lot of hotels that have that as an amenity, and uh, EV drivers will pick those places because the very next day they don't have to stop at the charger because it's you, you just, just plug it in overnight. That's right. Job done. Job yeah. done. And uh, when I was going down to Oregon, um, mm -hmm. the Adrift Hospitality, who um, sponsored uh, my trip, uh, they those both of those uh, locations, a, the Adrift Hotel in Longview, Washington, right. and the A Shore Hotel in Seaside, Oregon, they both had EV chargers on site. And uh, they had a really neat sign up mm -hmm. system where mm -hmm. if you wanted to use their charger, you get the card, right. you sign your name, you bring the card back, they keep track. So that every guest has a chance to charge up. Right, right. So, yeah. so once you're fully charged, you can just they can just hook, unhook it, yeah. you know, and then it'll be available for the next person who wants yeah. to charge it. Okay. You sign back in, and then okay. the next person can be given the card, which is fantastic. And you know that's great. And a lot of these places that are pre more premium, like the Age of Hospitality mm -hmm. properties, um, hotels like Marriott properties, right. they're all adding chargers into their properties because they want to attract this clientele. They want to attract um, more more EV drivers because they know that mm -hmm. once they have the charges, once they're known, they're going to get a lot more business oh, as yeah. a result of yeah. that. And uh, a good. lot, even a lot of restaurants are starting to set up shop near EV charging uh, installations. Mm -hmm. And on the opposing side, uh, a lot of EV charging companies like EVgo will set up uh, their EV chargers, their sites, near a number of restaurants, just like a couple of the ones that yeah. uh, I figured out the EVgo. There was a Jack in the Box and a Fred Meyer right <laughs> beside the EVgo stations. And I went to Jack in the Box. They got 249 tacos, <laughs> got two of them for 249, it's cheap. That's good, that's good. Right. So um, does this make you not want an EV? Uh, I am considering, or not reconsidering. I'm just thinking of, you know, what's the benefits if uh, I was driving in city areas versus in rural areas, right? Like, so, keep in mind, this is like a road trip situation when yeah. you're going down to the US yeah. or across Canada or something like that. This, these are just things to keep in mind yeah. as the networks grow out. This, like, this podcast might be out of the date in the next six months to 12 months when mm. there's a EV charging station every 100 kilometers. Yeah. Well, my wife's definitely going for the, uh, the ID4, the Volkswagen mm -hmm. one, because the driving, driving experience that she says she gets from the ID4 is very similar to what she's driving right now. That's true. Gone, right? It's true. So she'll probably do that. Uh, for me, I'm still considering whether to get a second-line Tesla and not because, oh, it's a Tesla. It's because, like I said, some of the, the charging stations um, the scarcity and, you know, the infrastructure and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's, um, but then again, who knows in six months time or a year's time, there yeah. could be more other they're building charges them out. Yeah, available. They're building them out. So, um, but the choice of other EVs vehicles from different brands look very appealing. They do. And, and there's a lot more coming out soon on the market. And if you're buying a, a used Tesla, at least that way, if you, if you, if you don't have to buy a used Tesla, you don't have to look for panel gaps, water damage, uh, and things falling off at uh, at speed, all right. And, and and all the all the uh, all the recalls have been yeah. done. So you know there there is benefit to it. It don't get me wrong, the technology is fantastic, but I think a little bit of the fit and finish. I think that uh, Elon, the Elon company, could learn from the big automakers from that. Yeah, yeah. So I hope 
some of this information in this podcast definitely helped you out. It helped it helped me out to find out these answers because then for the rest of my trip, I was a little bit more free to choose the charges that I wanted to charge at, but I still chose EVGO because of that one thing that really put me off. Yeah. Really got my I mean, knickers in a knot. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it's, you don't have to have that at the back of your mind thinking, oh, will this EV charger work? Will it take my credit card? You know, that kind of stuff. That's the worst feeling. <laughs> Right. And, you know, like if you if you miss an exit for a interstate on mm-hmm. the U.S. and some of the places, man, it takes forever to get back onto the highway and back to where you need to go. So it's like, a, uh, yeah, yeah. The same on, on the highway. Yeah. If you miss a stop or miss a turn, that the next one is going to be a it's going to be a long, long way. <laughs> and, you know, as long as, as long as you're not getting to the charger with like five percent left. You'll be fine. Keep that buffer up, like I mentioned in my tips, and uh, you should mm. be okay. But like, don't let it dissuade you. This yeah. is a bit of an adventure, but not really. <laughs> um, that's all the time we have for the day. I really hope again this helps someone out there. And you mm. know, if there is a, um, if at, at most this was a technical glitch for me, figured it out, fixed it, found the backup. Um, and I hope that you know, like this yeah. helps someone out there. Um, if you want to know more about EV road trips in the U.S hit me up uh, in the comments because that's the best way to get us right now. We're a small channel. There's two of us here. We're not a million subscribers where we have to reply to thousands of comments. If you do have a, a, a question below, leave it. You're gonna, we are going to answer you, not oh, yeah. one of our assistants because we don't have those people. <laughs> assistants? <laughs> Who, what? Yeah, so make sure you leave those comments below. We, we really appreciate them. We yeah. really um, grow and learn from them because um, we, we're, we're not so huge that we're just fully into ourselves. We're still learning. We want to do the best possible show for you. And that's why this show is shorter than normal because we're going to cut off here. Um, mm. To find me, unless you want to leave me a comment, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Stephen Fung. Um, same here, uh, Instagram and Twitter, uh, Winston Chim. Yeah, definitely. And tell us about those socials. Oh, yeah. We have social media now on, uh, on at our podcast show on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you didn't see our Instagram channel, it's loaded with a lot of the uh, adventures that we had at Computex well, by the time you're listening to this podcast. Uh, there, was, there was a lot going on at the biggest computer show yeah. on planet Earth yeah. and a lot of things that you might not even see for the next few months because this is where the future lives. <laughs> Taiwan, Taiwan, Computex. <laughs> All right. Well, until next week, um, Winston and I, thank you so much for you. subscribing. If you've chosen to do that, uh, it really helps us out if mm. you do subscribe because it also helps us let you know when our next episode hits YouTube because this you, this channel is a YouTube exclusive. You won't find this on Spotify. You won't find it on Apple Podcasts. You won't find it anywhere else. Right. And we wouldn't. We don't know anywhere else we want to be than with you, our viewers. So thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.